Hello everybody, so today we are going to be looking at what affects the performance of the CPU. So first of all we need to understand what is the CPU. So CPU stands for Central Processing Unit and that's a common mistake that people make that because people often think that the C stands for computer but we know that it doesn't stand for central and they, they can ask that on your exam. They might sometimes get you to fill in the gaps and the blanks, things like that. And uh, you don't want to fill in one of those wrong because it's a very easy mark that you don't want to lose. Okay, so in terms of what the CPU actually does, well, it, ha it actually does billions of what we call the fetch decode execute cycle. And we're going to go into more detail about that in just a moment. Now, in terms of where these instructions come from, they can come from input devices like your mouse or your keyboard, for example, or it could be program instructions. So the, the, the open programs that you've currently got running. But how do the CPU and RAM work together? Now, I've put in brackets there main memory because RAM is main memory and you can use those terms interchangeably in your exam. It doesn't matter. You, you wouldn't lose the mark for using RAM rather than main memory and vice versa. So the CPU will fetch the instructions from RAM. That's the proper word for it because that's the F and the FDE cycle. It will then bring that instruction back to the CPU the CPU will then decode it, which is the, obviously the D in FDA. Once it knows what the instruction is, it will then execute that instruction. And that doesn't mean to execute it, not that kind of execution, to carry out that instruction. Okay, and that is the FDE cycle, which it will just keep on repeating billions of times in one second. Now, when it comes to the performance of the CPU and how well it carries out those FDE cycles every second. The easy way to remember it are the three C's. And the first one is the clock speed, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Next one is cause. And finally, it's the cache. So your clock speed is measured in what we call hertz. But common up-to-date CPUs, you won't often see just hertz. You, you're going to be looking at something like gigahertz. So a typical clock speed would be something like this, 3.5 gigahertz. Okay, so the G being the giga, but we've still got hertz in there. Now, what that actually means is 3.5 billion instructions per second. Per second is actually really important, okay? So the higher that clock speed, if that was a higher number, you would be able to carry out more FTE cycles per second. Okay, the next thing that affects the performance are the cores. So a CPU can have multiple cores, and if you were explaining uh, why that might affect the performance, you could say that each core works independently. So let's have a look at some examples combining what we know about clock speed now and the cores. So here, here's an example of a CPU, 3.2 gigahertz dual core, okay? So when we see the word dual, it means it's got two cores, okay? So we've got 3.2 gigahertz, which we know is 3.2 billion, but then because it's dual core, it can do up to two times that amount. So 3.2 times by two or multiplied by two will give you 6.4 billion instructions per second. Let's have a look at one more example. So here's 3.5 gigahertz quad core. So we're going to do 3.5 multiplied by four this time. And you can think of quad being like a quad bike with four wheels. It's an easy way to remember it. So 3.5 times by 4 will give you 14 billion instructions per second. And the final thing that will affect the performance of the CPU is the cache. So cache holds frequently used instructions and it's located on the CPU. It has much faster access to cache than main memory. 
too much cash could be detrimental to the overall performance. So some cache memory is good because it does you do have faster access to cache than main memory and that will speed up the performance of the CPU. So just to finish this session, I wanted to just put some example questions that you can have a little practice of. So it's probably a good idea if you want to pause the video now. The best way to revise with these kind of questions is try and not rewind the video. Um, try and not look back in any notes inside your book that you may have been making as you were going. I want you to try these questions and then check your answers. And if you've made any mistakes, don't worry about it. You can just try it again. And that's the whole point. When you, you keep on trying and answering those questions, that's how you will embed that knowledge.